that I'm going to start doing, hello, is when I go live on Instagram, I'm going to go live on YouTube. And that way the videos are there. Um, hi, Vancouver. Are there today, so you can rewatch them. Um, I just watched, hey, Dr. Ken is here. Uh, maybe he'll weigh in on what I'm going to talk about, protein. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan, and you guys know this, of Mark Sisson's work, of Rob Wolf's work. Um, they were kind of my intro to keto, even though I know they're traditionally known in the paleo camp. If you take a closer look at their work, um, they've always promoted lower carb, um, good fats, adequate protein intake. Hello, Virginia, Pacific Northwest. Awesome. Um, thanks everyone for being here. Um, and it's interesting because I think for a long time, I kind of didn't relate their work to keto because I just thought there was two different things. But it's interesting that as keto's gotten bigger and they've kind of claimed their space in that arena, um, you know, they're like experts and they they have their knowledge to share. And I heard Rob Wolf talk on um, the keto panel, mastermind panel at Paleo FX. Um, and actually there was one moment at Paleo FX where it was Rob Wolf and Mark Sisson just hanging out on the balcony, having a conversation. <laughs> about keto and I was happy to walk upon that conversation which of course several people made a circle around them and we were all listening in um and when they spoke I remember thinking this is what keto is to me and I get so many messages people ask me do you paleo or keto do you whole 30 or keto and I'm like why is it or why or it's the same thing for me it's the same thing it my my keto is paleo um, and I think there are a few details that change that make that difference between keto and paleo. And one of the big ones, or that make a divide where instead of them being the same coheat thing or overlapping, there's more of a divide. And one of the big ones is protein. You hear a lot on keto. Um, and I see it in Facebook groups. And it breaks my heart. Um, limit your protein. Limit your protein. My weight loss is stalled. The comments come in. You're eating too much protein. You're eating too much protein. Um, I mean, I've seen people recommend to other women that they're eat that for them to eat less than 50 grams a day. And to me, that's crazy. <laughs> um, I think more important than losing weight, like pounds off your body is gaining muscle because when you build muscle you burn fat um and you want to be toned and you want to be strong and you don't want to be flabby um right there you want to like that's the whole thing like who cares what the number on the scale says if your body is like strong and toned and to get strong and toned you need protein because building muscle you need protein um so rob wolf on his facebook page right now has a fantastic 25 minute video where he's completely crushing the glucogeogenesis. I can't talk lately, Jesus Louise, blah. Glucogeogenesis uh, myth, pretty much saying that yes, you can eat enough protein to get you out of ketosis, but holy hell, it doesn't happen easily. You need to eat a lot of protein to get you kicked out of ketosis. Um, so people take that and they hear that and then they just keep repeating it too much protein, too much protein when it's not really accurate. Um, my blog where I talk about calories and in my book where I do talk about calories, which granted my camp is, I don't really track, but I think you should, if you're new to all this, you should track at first to get the hang of it and then stop. My recommendation isn't to go off of percentages. Like, yes, people say, hey, these are the percentages. But when you're figuring stuff out for you, you have to do the math, which means for me, that is a gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. So then that's my protein goal. Um, then my carbs, my carb limit, which would be, I don't know, depending. I do total, so my 50 grams of carbs. And then the rest of my calories will come from fat. And that'll just be until I'm satisfied. So that'll kind of like, um, <clears throat> so that'll vary depending on the day. Um, and 
for me, that comes out to like 140 grams of protein. That's a lot of protein. Someone's like, oh my God. And I, I, I understand that every day I'm probably not hitting that number. I mean, like I said, I don't track, but it's fluid. Some days I'm like straight up. I want all the protein. And other days I'm like, I'm like, ah, I'm okay. Um, but one thing on keto in the last year, I put on a ton of muscle. I weight lift all the time. Um, I, you know, I've seen really good results. Um, I have a lot of definition. <clears throat> So I am like, for me, I know that that works. Um, someone commented on YouTube. I think it's also a person is just starting in keto. It's easy. For, it's easier for them to have the protein turn into an insulin glucose spike. Once they are fat adapted, it's more difficult. So if you look, if you go look at the studies that Mark, that Rob Wolf is in, so I'm referencing, he, it's on his page right now. Um, apparently there like, isn't an insulin spike from protein. That's also another myth. Um, yes, of course we're, we're each different. So unless you're testing your glucose after each meal and you have a high protein meal and your glucose spikes, maybe that's the result for you. But for most people that wouldn't be, that's not like the common, um, result from studies done testing this. Um, but like I said, it's, I think a lot of it tends to be taken out of context saying eat pro moderate protein, which is the recommendation of keto moderate protein, I think is still like what I'm eating about a hundred grams of, of protein a day. That's still moderate. I think going onto that, you're going into the low, 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 low protein intake. And there's a difference there. Um, so really what, what's happening is that people are swapping out fat for protein. And then if you're eating like, yeah, fat's great and it's going to keep you full and it's going to get you in ketosis. But if you're, if you're putting like protein should be a goal, carbs, a limit fat to satiety. But if you're doing fat first, it's going to keep you full. And if you're eating a lot of fat and you're full, you're not going to eat protein because both of those things are really filling. Um, yeah. So 0.8 exactly to 1.2 kilograms per day as a starting range. I do, I'm really active and I talk about that in my book as well. Um, I'm, I weight lift. I'm an active person. If you're sedentary, I would start with 0.8. I'm really active. So I do a gram of protein. Um, so it, it depends on your activity level, but I think most people, um, if you, you know, if you're weigh 150 pounds, like, um, that's still, you're still like, even if you're sedentary, that's still like 75 grams of protein. I think my, I'm not good at math, but if I think I did that right. <laughs> um, so think about that 75 grams for someone who's 150 and is sedentary. So <clears throat> that's just the recommendation, like for, from a lot of people, um, I think that gets lost. And I think when people try to search for really fast, you know, like, yeah, you go super high fat, super, super low, pro, like low everything else for a few days, you're going to lose a ton of water weight. <clears throat> but is that really like, that's when the obsession with the scale goes wrong. Um, and it all kind of circles back to, you got to eat intuitively. You got to do what feels right for you. You, the, you're, you're other than the scale. Um, hey, yeah. Other than the scale, there's m more important things to your health and how well you're doing do you have energy um is your skin healthy are you sleeping well um when you go to the gym are you seeing progress like can you improve are you lifting heavier every few weeks are you running faster are you you know what i'm saying you shouldn't be reversing um and those things just take time to see um anyway long story short that's just something near and dear to my heart i feel like when I see that low protein, low protein, lower your protein recommendations, I get like, ah, it's scary. Yes. Non-scale victories, hands down weight loss. I mean, I tell us, I tell people all the time, I weigh the same. I've weighed the same weight for a long time now. I think it's been, I don't know, over six months since the scale, the number on the scale hasn't moved, but I've dropped dress sizes. Like I'm, my body is changing. My thighs have muscle. My arms have muscle. My hips are like, I'm losing fat on my torso. That's awesome. But this number on the scale is the same. Why? Because I'm gaining muscle and losing fat. So who cares what the scale says? Like, 
Um, when I can take my jeans out of the dryer and they're loose, woo, you know? Um, Ali Miller RD, she's a registered dietitian. You can check her on Ali Miller. She's saying that her clients get brain fog and hair loss if they're chronically too low protein. A lot of these keto gone wrong things when people are like, oh, the super crazy breath or I'm losing hair or I'm, <clears throat> you know, just like the rashy skin. A lot of weird things happen when you kind of go off the reservation. That's why I'm always like, you have to go, like if something sounds too crazy, it probably is. <laughs> so just a reminder to um, common sense and science, science, science. There's, it's crazy because even though keto seems like this brand new idea, it's not a wagon of something that sounds like absolutely insane. If your intuition is like, I don't know, that sounds crazy. It might be. Um, so yeah, like I said, I mean, um, Rob Wolf right now has a really, really, really good video on his YouTube channel. I highly suggest you go watch it. Um, I will link it in my stories on Instagram and in the comments here on YouTube. Um, and again, this is something I talk about in my book. Of course, I explain traditional keto macros and percentages, but then I also explain how I break down mine and why you really have to find out what works for you. If someone just says, you know, hey, try these numbers, like because they worked for them, you guys don't have the same body. So you have to, if you are going to track, if you are someone who needs those numbers to stay on track, you need to make your own calculations because your body composition is different than anybody else's. Um, and um, yeah, and it, it's crazy because we all have different needs. Like someone could look at me and say, oh, you're a 30 something year old woman. You need 1600 calories to survive. <laughs> laughable, laughable. I would like die on 1600 calories. <laughs> um, so yeah, eat your protein. Don't go crazy with calorie deficits. Eat fat to stay satisfied. Eat fat to get, you know, like I love MCTs in the morning. They help me like really get into ketosis. Um, it's okay to have an ebb and flow, you know, um, not every day. We're not robots. We're not going to eat the same thing every day. Um, perfect example. This is, of course, super anecdotal. But I, what's today? Today's Thursday. Tuesday night, I had a carb up. I hadn't had one in a long time, but I was like, I felt kind of in for a few days and I felt not like super insatiable. I just didn't feel satisfied. Like I was eating my regular meals and I was just kind of left like, so finally I'm like, all right, maybe it's time for a carb up. I did one. I ate a bowl of, bowl of starch. It was delicious. Um, not like straight starch, <laughs> anyway, but so starchy food. Went to sleep, slept like a slept great. Yesterday I fasted with my fatty coffee with the brain octane um, pretty much until dinner time. So I had three cups of coffee throughout, you know, between 6 a.m. and noon, went to the gym, worked out. I had a little coconut butter packet before the gym. So fat fasted all day, worked out in the evening, in the afternoon, came home, made a giant veggie pad thai with kohlrabi noodles and chicken and egg, ate that, and then went to bed. And then today it's like, you know, it's still early here, but so... Was that an ideal day for me? Did I eat my Did I eat my protein goals yesterday? Probably not. But then today I'll probably eat more protein. But I'm just gonna kind of go with what my body is uh, craving, right? I think after I had the carb up, oddly enough, I was just really full the next day, and so I didn't feel the need to eat until the evening. And I get it. I've been doing this a long time, so those things kind of come organically to me. But I had to work on it. I had to experiment and trust my body and kind of let go of the thought that if I wasn't following the rules, I was failing. So, all right. That's the message for the day. Girl, that pad thai is so good. It's coming to the blog this week. And it's those kohlrabi noodles are like really low carb. I think they're like even lower carb than like zucchini and they're delicious and they don't get soggy. And anyway, I can't wait to share that recipe. So yeah, I'm going to link the Rob Wolf video because it's so good. And I just love eating up all that awesome sciencey information. Um, it's so fun to geek out over. Um, so I'm going to link it in stories or on YouTube, on the YouTube comments. And uh, all right, that's it for my live for today. Uh, you can always message me if you have any questions. Go eat your protein.